Good morning and welcome to Living Local 15. I'm your host, Jessica Williams. Thank you so much for joining me today. We have a jammed, packed show for you, so let's get started. We are kicking things off at the Monogram Shop. If you're looking for a unique and personalized graduation gift, well, that's the place to shop. Then the City Moms are here, and they're going to join us to share about hacks for organizing your cabinets and kitchen space. And later, we learn all about blessings in a backpack and how they are supporting kids in our community. Are you ready? Let's get started. Fashion, food, and fun. You're watching Living Local 15 with your host, Jessica Williams. This segment, sponsored by The Monogram Shop. We are now in graduation season, and what better gift than something that is customized, personalized, and monogrammed. So I am here at The Monogram Shop with owner Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, graduation, it's a big time. It big is. Big accomplishment for people, so I it know. is. Can you believe? And we are quite the graduation headquarters. You are, look at this. First off, let's just take a moment to look at all of these brands behind us. So beautiful, where should we get started? Right up here, I will show you, all these are thermoses. And I have like Ball State, oh, we okay. have Michigan State, Michigan, Notre Dame, Butler. And you know, most thermoses look guyish. This is such a cute one it because is. it has girly things. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, this one I just love, guess what? Purdue, and we've got hey, yeah. Zach Eady's number on, and that is just so fun. So yeah. this is a great one for graduation. We have all sorts of pens with the different colleges. Mm -hmm. You know what, I think this is such a good one, like this Ball State one. You could put a check in here, or you could use oh, it for yeah. a business card. That's great, especially for graduates. You know how to represent. They usually go back for alumni events right. during this time. And they love that. Then we've got the big thermoses. Oh, I love that. Isn't that fill it? Yeah. It is such Ooh. a nice one. These are just great. And then, oh, sorry, uh -huh. this small one. Oh, this yeah, one. Those are cute. Yeah. Too. Fill the, isn't oh, that? Oh, it's like a, a matted suede type of right. or, um, really velvety and they're only 19 oh, nice. and then i've got all the ones we've got trine purdue fort wayne we've got butler st francis all of these because graduations are sort of college ones are mm -hmm. starting now and things like that some of the things that we do custom are this is a really one we do a lot of Oh. Girls for the dorm, isn't that just adorable? Yes. And we put a name down there you can oh, see at the at bottom. That. Oh, that's perfect. And Especially they come they in a number share. of colors. I know. Yeah. And you know, with all the dorms there, uh, co-ed, you might need that. Right, exactly. You have to walk up the hallway. And then another thing, this is the craziest thing that we sell. It's our laundry bags. They're 30 by 40. Oh, isn't that huge? You can yeah. get all your laundry in there. They're $31.99 and we put either a first or last name on them mm -hmm. and we have them in a number of colors, red, black, blue, orange, yellow, green. So these are just great. We try and match the school colors. Yes. Okay. Well, Sarah, you have to share what you told me earlier. So you've been here, of course, for 44 years. Amazing how long you've had this store. But you had someone come in who, who had this bag since they graduated. And how old are they now? 52. Can you believe that? <laughs> that is just good. crazy. But they are fabulous. Mm -hmm. And people love these. So they are great. <laughs> High and quality. We've got, uh, <laughs> blankets here too, Aww. which are fabulous. And feel this, they are so soft. Oh, yeah. And custom. Yeah, we do a name on those. So those are beautiful. great too. Yeah. And then we also have all sorts of picture frames, all oh, of this yeah. kind of thing Aww. for all the different colleges. Mm -hmm. And, you know, another thing, a lot of people don't want to give a present. They want to do money. money. So we've got the things for money. Yes. One okay. thing is this book right here, it's called Maybe. Okay. And it's all about possibilities. And that is a great book. And inside you could write a message. That is nice. And then another one was here about yeah. five years from now, five years from today. That is a really neat one to have. Mm -hmm. And then for the people who want to give money, mm -hmm. I've got over here some fun <laughs> things. We were talking about it earlier. Right. Check this out. <laughs> it is a wallet. Put your money in and they've got their money. It looks like a $100 bill. 
so you can <laughs> decide how much you're going to put in it. Right, and I recommend let it be more than 100. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And this is another, this is a fun card. Oh. It folds down, and right here you can put money in it too. And it's got, you pull this out and you can write a message. Oh. So that is a neat one. That is lovely. This is a maze for a gift card. Uh -huh. And the same with that. Oh yeah, I kind of pull it out. Uh huh. Very and you creative. have to do the maze to get it in. All oh. the money out, so that's what is really good. <laughs> the ultimate um, SAT. <laughs> yes, exactly. And we have over here, we've got pillows from some of the different colleges. Mm -hmm. And pretty much looking for a graduation present, give us a call. Also, we can get like the stationery for their thank you oh, notes and yeah. all of that stuff too. Mm -hmm. So that's a good one. Yeah, so as I'm looking over here, Sarah, just a few things. I know uh -huh. that you have so many options, which are great, but these cooking grill spatulas really oh. caught my attention and the number one fans. Yeah, <laughs> these, one. and you know, Father's Day is coming, so all of these are great for that. Somebody who has a first apartment and they're a fan, wouldn't this be a great one yes. for them? We've got playing cards in Purdue, IU, Ohio State. We have wallets. Pretty much, if you're looking for a graduation present, we are the place to come. Yeah, something for everyone. Yeah, exactly. And so, Sarah, are you still doing your Facebook Lives? Every Thursday night at 7.30. Okay. And then we have a door prize. Put your name and phone number in, mm -hmm. and someone wins our door prize each week. Oh. And we post it afterwards, so mm -hmm. if you miss it, you can look at it afterwards. Okay. And what are your hours here? I know people are running around trying oh, to get yeah. ready for graduation. When can they come see you? We're open 10 to 6, Monday through Friday, mm -hmm. 10 to 5 on Saturdays. Okay. So yeah, we are available to, for you to come shop with us. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. Uh -huh, thank you. <laughs> if you would like more information about the Monogram Shop, we'll have their website listed below, and I'll see you after the break. This segment, sponsored by the Monogram Shop. Have an idea for the show? Want to find out how you can be a guest? Contact us at livinglocal15 at wayne.com. Right now is the perfect time to start organizing your cabinets as you are doing your spring cleaning. And we actually have some really great tips for you today from the City Moms. And Janine is joining me today to tell us all about pantry organizing hacks for the spring. Hi, Janine. Hi there. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> great. Thanks for having me. I know yes. we just went through our own pantry overhaul, so I'm feeling like these hacks might be fresh, fresh yes. in the head. Yes. They are so popular online, watching people kind of create eight an aesthetic yes. for their refrigerators, for their pantries, and Everything. so much more. So you brought in the good stuff. I did, <laughs> I did. And we're first starting by thinking about um, the organizing itself. And we're mm -hmm. seeing a lot of the acrylic containers being used quite a yes. bit for organizing. I know you and I were just chatting about that. <laughs> um, and I think that's all thanks to the home edit, which is really that that team that brought this so popular. Oh, but okay. you know, when we're thinking about these, um, these clear containers, these acrylic containers, they are really beneficial yeah. because it's easy to see at a glance maybe the things that you are low on mm -hmm. helps you when you're planning your grocery list right and plus when you have all of your items in similar containers that aesthetic then is very cohesive looking yes so and I, you can kind of what I love about it is it's easy to access instead of yes. having to open up ah, let me use chip clips and bag clips and all of I that know. you can actually have so much just pop and go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I think speaking of pop, I think one of the things that we love about this is all of these containers have a fresh seal, a freshness seal to uh -huh. keep everything that's inside, you know, nice and crisp. I know for us at home, cereal is kind of the biggest offender. Mm -hmm. um, we'll always, I always find our cereal boxes like half open, the bags are half open. Yuck. Yes. But these containers, again, they have that freshness seal. And I mean, the way that these are designed is just oh, kind yeah. of so Oh yeah, pop fun. and go. Exactly. Great so, for moms. Really simple to use. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the nice thing is we're finding these literally everywhere now, all retailers, mm -hmm. and they're not super overpriced. They're pretty yeah. reasonably priced. Yeah. Okay, awesome. And then so, but, but let's talk about some tips, though, when it yeah. comes to keeping them stocked and not having that overflow. So that's something we discussed. Yes. It's like you want to put all of your beans and your right. um, spaghetti and everything in these, but then 
what, what happens if there's too much in the box? Yep. So now you need double storage. <laughs> yeah, so what we always recommend to people is you don't want to overstock your can your pa pantry or your cabinets mm -hmm. um, because then oftentimes things go missing, they get hidden, you're mm -hmm. not going to be using those as often. Yeah. So we recommend creating your own overflow area either in a basement or in your garage, somewhere that's mm -hmm. going to be safe. Mm -hmm. That way you're only putting out what you need to use. Okay. And again, with this aesthetic, you'll be able to tell quickly if it's low and needs right. to be restocked. So. so that's interesting. That's actually good. Maybe like a storage box or something, something yes. that can be sealed and also put away would be great. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And then when we're thinking about organizing, kind of that next area mm -hmm. is um, thinking about all the space that you have in your pantry. Often as consumers, we're only using that bottom shelf. Right. We're not thinking about all of the space yes. up there. So our second kind of big tip is to really identify your space mm -hmm. and move it around. Customize it as you need. Move a shelf down if that's helpful. Uh -huh. Another thought is bins can come easily to oh, stack. Yes. So now you're starting to see all that space mm -hmm. you can use up vertically. Right. One of the items that we're loving Good. is that double turnstile. There's also double shelving, but oh. this makes items really easily accessible on two spots. Yes. I use this for our cooking oils, oh, for example. Yeah, I was going to say spices would be great spices on that. Spices are great oh, too. Goodness. Yes, but that really helps. Again, now we're not just using that flat shelf surface. Mm -hmm. We're using all of the cabinet's vertical space. Right. Okay, love that. And then our third tip is to really think about your pain points when you're okay. organizing, because <laughs> all of us have them. Mm -hmm. I brought my air fryer as a good example. Uh -huh. So our air fryer sits in our small appliance cabinet at home. And the thing we run across is that all appliances have this. They have right. an extra cord. These start to get tangled mm -hmm. with each other. So for my pain point, we grabbed these cord organizing um, tips or uh, from 3M. Okay. And I don't have the sticky tab on here, but essentially how this works is these affixed to the back of your appliance mm -hmm. with that sticky tab, then you can wrap your cord up and this will keep all oh, of these good. out of the way. So yes. that was a big pain point for us. Another quick illustration, this sits in the very back of my appliance cabinet. Uh -huh. I'm not a very tall person, so it can be, <laughs> it can be a challenge to try yeah. and get it down. So what I did was affix these wheels to the bottom and these oh. again are just by 3M, found uh -huh. these at Meijer. And now it makes it super easy just to kind of bring in and out, slide, slide and in and out. Exactly. Wow, that's so great. Yeah, and you know exactly. what's so good about that cord wraparound is the fact that sometimes you get those little twisty ties, but it, but it still makes it all mumbled and jumbled. Absolutely. So I love that it sticks to the back. Keep yes. it super organized. Yeah. Because it's all about the aesthetic. It is. But again, <laughs> just think about those things that are really causing you trouble and struggle with mm -hmm. your pantry as you're going through this refresh. Make Identify those and find some solutions. Yeah, absolutely. This is so great. So thank you so much, Janine, for yes, bringing in these tips and tricks and hacks. And I know people can find out so much more mm -hmm. on your website, right? Yes, they can. We've got plenty more pantry organizing hacks on the website. And uh, hopefully we'll help, help you get your organization moving for yeah. the spring. Okay. Thanks so much. <laughs> And if you would all like to learn more about the City Moms, we'll actually have their website listed below. Their membership is free, so go ahead and subscribe to get all of this really great information and so much more. And I'll see you after the break. Follow us on social media at Living Local 15. Blessings in a Backpack provides children in our community nutritious bags of food in their backpacks every Friday during the school year. This effort is to help ensure that kids have a meal over the weekend. And joining me today is Jayma Ross, who is their executive director. Good morning. Hi, thanks for having me. Yes. So this initiative is just really amazing. When I was reading about it, it kind of broke my heart a little bit, looking at the statistics and thinking about um, that there are kids that can actually go home without food over the weekend. So I love what you all are doing. So give us an overview of your organization and your mission. Well, it, 
And I think a lot of people in our community don't realize just how rampant hunger is. The statistic that we've gone on for a couple of years is that 70% of kids in Fort Wayne community schools are struggling with food insecurity, meaning they don't know where or when their next meal is coming from. But that's actually an outdated statistic. So with inflation and the soaring cost of groceries, we're actually looking at more of an 80%. Wow. In some of the schools that we're in, it's actually up to 95%. So if we can just imagine 95% of kids in a school that doesn't know when or where their next meal is coming from. Mm -hmm. So we go into schools and once we're implemented, every Friday the kids open up their backpack, we stick a bag of food in there, and then we know that they're not going without food for the entire weekend. Yeah, that is so great. Um, and you all have different programs that you initiate throughout the year. So can you kind of go over them for me? Sure. So of course there is our feeding program, which mm -hmm. is every child, once we're in a school, every child gets it. So there is not like a have and haves not. There's not that stigma attached, mm -hmm. which we think is so vital. Mm -hmm. um, we also have what we call believe bags. Mm -hmm. And our believe bags are really to fight some of the other issues that come along with just that lack of nutrition. So if you're battling mm -hmm. food insecurity, it's directly related to mental health issues, um, mm -hmm. low self-esteem, poor scholastic scores. You can't expect anybody to, um, to thrive if their basic needs aren't being met. Mm -hmm. So to kind of battle that self-esteem issue, we have something we call Believe Bags. And it's when we know that children are really seeing that other kids might um, be getting more than them or maybe that they need a spot at their table filled. Mm -hmm. So like Thanksgiving, Christmas, yeah. a back to school, we give them a gift bag that not only has food but also has a little extra stuff in there and of course a message telling them we believe in their dreams, we believe that they're valid, we believe that they're worthy and of course we're out here rooting for them. Yeah. So it's really not only feeding the tummy, it's also feeding the soul. Yeah, I love that. And you mentioned about it being equal. So I want to talk about that and circle sure. back because you said that basically anyone can get the food. So it's not um, an isolated experience. It's not right. a child feeling um, kind of insecure about asking for it. It's just a general program that does not discriminate. Right. Once we're in a yeah. school, every child gets fed every Friday. Because what we've discovered in study after study is that if a child is told that this is something that creates that stigma, mm -hmm. um, number one, there's several reasons why families <coughs> don't show, don't um, sign up for assistance. I was one of those single moms that I didn't sign up for help, although I definitely could have used it. Yeah. And so we don't want to create, number one, the feeling that they have to um, ask for help or admit that they need that kind mm -hmm. of help because there's many reasons why they won't and then kids go without. Right. Or that we separate the kids and they have to feel like, I, I am somebody who is lacking because I have to ask for this. Mm -hmm. Because we again, studies show the kids will not eat the food if right. they feel like they're going to get made fun of for it. Mm -hmm. So we feel like that's just as damaging as not being fed. Yeah. So it just alleviates that problem of every kid, every Friday. And I, I feel like if, if the biggest problem with the organization is that we have given um, kids just too much food, right. I can sleep at night. <laughs> I can sleep at night with that. Because right. like I said, in these schools that are in the 90 percentile, mm -hmm. nobody's being overfed. They need every mouthful they can get. Yes, and there are so many schools in the district um, of Fort Wayne. And so are you, is Blessings in a Backpack in every single school? Oh, How do you kind of work through <laughs> in um, placement? Are you looking for new schools to go to? What is the Abs status? Absolutely. So we are currently, we started in 2007. We're mm -hmm. currently in seven schools. And okay. it is the top, we go by the, the needs. So the top right. schools that are most food insecure, we go into. Mm -hmm. And again, because we insist that every child is that it takes us a little bit longer to make sure that number one, that's sustainable, that right. we won't go in and have to pull it out after the kids getting, are getting used to it. And number two, mm -hmm. that every single child um, can, can have that. Um, we have three schools that are on our waiting list. Mm -hmm. And so we're always looking for um, you know, adopt a school, sponsors, corporations who could come in and who can fill that need to make sure that we're consistently expanding and we're right. adding. Yeah. So that's something that we're getting ready to add our eighth school and ideally will be in every school and then we can start um, expanding to the middle schools, the high schools and yes. well, you know, other <laughs> counties. So it's it's a project that I see growing very quickly. Yes, that's amazing. And as a nonprofit organization, I'm sure it takes so much 
effort to try to get the food because it's like you're feeding that many children. Where does the food come from? So I know that right. you have different initiatives to allow for people mm -hmm. to volunteer, to donate, and like you said, adopt a school. Right. Yeah. Well, we feed over 3,000 kids every weekend. Wow. So that's over 114,000 bags of food yeah. that we're able to distribute every year. And like you said, we're we're completely local nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So we're completely Fort Wayne. Um, our office space is donated. We only have one one staff member. That's me. Yeah. Uh, but so that means wow. that whenever someone is donating, it truly directly is going to food. It's not going to you know huge overhead costs or marketing or right. it's it's going directly into the mouths of kids. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty fortunate in that. Yeah. So how can people um, participate, donate? Um, how do you receive support? So I think that the best way is um, number one, helping us spread awareness. Mm -hmm. So even if there's nothing that you can give monetarily, going to our Facebook, liking our page sharing our page just to help people realize that number one food insecurity is a huge issue for yeah. our kids in our community um, number two if you go to blessingsindiana.org you can make a donation mm -hmm. um, you can look into how you can sponsor a child for um, a year a year is only hundred and twenty dollars wow. and that sponsors that feeds a child for an entire year wow. through our program through the weekends um, you can look on how you can get part of our blessing society um, you can look into what it takes to actually take on a school and sponsor a whole mm -hmm. school and we have our summer program coming up. So we're partnering uh, with the Allen County Public Library and we're mm -hmm. going to be feeding throughout the summer also. So okay. there's so many programs wow. you could be part of. There's a lot of volunteer opportunity there also. Mm -hmm. So we're just, there's, there's just so many ways to get involved and all of them will make a huge impact. Yes, and if they just follow you on your social media, check out your website, right. they can see what's coming up. Absolutely. All right, Jama, thank you so much. Thanks for having us. <laughs> You're welcome. And if you would like more information about Blessings in a Backpack, we'll have their website listed below, and I'll see you after the break. Living Local 15, proudly driven by the Kelly Automotive Group. Well, that's our show for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you would like more information about Living Local 15, you can always rewatch episodes and segments by going to wayne.com, downloading the Wayne app, and also checking us out on YouTube. And I'll leave you with this. It's never too late to live your best life. So start living it today. And I look forward to seeing you here tomorrow. Bye-bye. Content segments during today's Living Local 15 were paid for by these sponsors.